Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Ms. Honeydrop. I will be talking about the Orishas in today's video and the role they play in our lives. So, who are ancestors? Ancestors, as we know or probably have heard, are our forefathers, our forebearers, those who have been in existence before us, the parent of our parents, both maternal and paternal side. These are people who, without them, there'll be no us. So they, they existed between our parents, before our parents' generation and our generation. I know I'm speaking a lot gibberish now, but all I'm trying to say is that in simple terms, ancestors can even be referred to as our grandparents uh great grandparents both sides of the family that's the simplest explanation of who ancestors are but then ancestors are not just our bloodline there are ancestors who played a huge role in our um before our time because we probably were not even born at the time they existed they had come, done their own doings, and have been taken to the other side, you know. So, ancestors um, in, in our land, in our country, uh, in our continent, or even global ancestors are people who left their mark on earth. So, yeah, those are also ancestors. But I'm talking here about our bloodline. Our grandparents or great grandparents, great 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 grandparents, those we probably didn't know, but they play a huge role on in us being here. Anyway, as we are aware of over the couple of years, there are many people across the world who are doing ancestry tests, trying to find their ancestors, especially those in the diaspora like America and other parts of the world but mainly america people want to know where they're from and they want to have a link and have a complete bonding with these wonderful ancestors of theirs that they never got to know i'm just going to take a sip of coffee speaking too much english huh. so these are the reasons why people do ancestry tests they just want to have an idea of where they're from who their ancestors are how they can come to know the people who are still connected to these ancestors and have a good relationship and bonding with them so this is the reason for a lot of these ancestry tests but other people have different reasons for doing them but that's the main one now in yoruba cosmology ancestors are called egungu in isheshe so now egungu in the general terms is known as the masquerades but they're not necessarily masquerades so our ancestors in isheshe are referred to as egungu and offerings and homage is paid to them libation is poured to them i pour libations for my ancestors i'll tell you a story about how my own journey started my Kabbalah teacher he introduced me to a, a, pa a Chinese paper note called Hell Notes. They're not Hell Notes like Hellfire or any of that nonsense, but they are called Hell Notes for whatever reason. Anyway, you burn this, um, and there's another one. Oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's a gold and silver paper that you use in venerating ancestors. So I burn it and just say a prayer to my ancestors and even it's kind of like um, an energetic way of paying a debt that they hold because it is money and the higher currency based on the paper you give, the more their debts will be paid off. Um, I'm going to take a photo of it and leave it on my instagram so for anyone who wants to see it because to be honest i can't be bothered to get up right now to go look for it but i'll leave i'll leave it on my thingy so you can have a look of what a hell note looks like moving on 
I started burning this for them, but after a while, my ancestors developed a relationship with me and they started asking me to get more connected with them because they speak to me. And then the bond and the relationship started growing. They asked me to make an altar for them, which I did. I didn't have a clue what to do. I was like, gosh, what am I going to do now? So I later found out that the simplest form is just get a glass of water, a picture of them and their name or their names. If it's more than one, you just, that is the basic beginning for building a relationship with your ancestors and when they requested of me to do that that was what i did because they wanted to work with me they wanted to help me and yeah that was how we started building our relationship um why should you work with your ancestors you'd ask ancestors are so amazing in such a way that they guide you to undo some of the things that have been done now the more you build your relationship with them the better for both of you it's like a symbiotic relationship you need them they need you you need each other the more you pray for them the more they ascend your growth also allows your ancestors to ascend because contrary to what people think that oh um when people die souls just go and chill and whatever that's not really the case they kind of carry on working and developing and building themselves like they go through something you can call community service of helping out in fact some of our ancestors become our spirit guides they actually become one of our spirit guides there are ancestors who are part of your spirit guide team now you might not know these ones because they had gone before you were even born your mom might not or your dad might not even know them because they're like i like way 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 before your time so there you do have ancestors that are spirit guides that you are not aware of them they had gone to be on the other side before you were born but they still work with you, they work closely with you, they guide you, they help you, they channel through you, and all that kind of stuff. Ancestors help us find our path. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me things like, how do I know my head, Orisha? How do I do this? How do I like, okay, slow down. Let's take you one step at a time. Okay, let's not <laughs> jump. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> let's not jump before we are ready to even run i always say to the people that talk to me about these things like make effort to grow your relationship with your ancestors first because ancestors and orishas sometimes work hand in hand not all the time but sometimes and your ancestors will know what orisha is meant to be in your life anyway if the orisha hasn't come to show him or herself to you and you haven't had the opportunity to find out in your if I reading coincidentally or you do uh, an itefa then you have to kind of depend on your spirit your spirit team your ancestors most of the time are part of your spirit team as well so this is why I always say build a relationship with your ancestors you'll find out who your Orisha is or are because most of us have more than one our ancestors do a real great job in guiding us they help us a lot and if i'm gonna be honest with you i actually enjoy working with ancestors better <laughs> personally um when i work with my ancestors they kind of move faster obviously we have a strong blood line bond they are my parents parents so they're my parents when I need something and I need it to move Orisha's come through don't get me wrong but it's just this special bond between okay let me give you a real life, life example when you need your mom to buy you something and when you need your school principal to do something for you what do you think is gonna get off their button 
move on your behalf first right i thought so think about it that way mom's gonna come through like nah man my baby's not gonna go without whatever she needs so moms or parents in general will come through for you quicker than someone else now don't get me wrong i'm not saying that riches wouldn't come through before you go and quote me that oh miss only drop said i didn't say nothing okay please i'm just saying personal relationship with my spirit guides especially my ancestors help me come into fulfilling a lot of things that i should have done also they help you heal your trauma the benefits of working with ancestors can never be overemphasized and it can never be underestimated either they would help you in ways you could never have thought of like yeah now i've spoken about how we can pick epigenetics from our parents based on things they were going through during period where they were pregnant with us or things they had even gone through before we were formed and epigenetics are not real genetics by the way they just kind of look like real genetics they kind of <laughs> they are um what i would call an imposter because <laughs> they're not real genetics but they play out to look like real genetics and they they give us a lot of trouble in our lifetime ancestors will help you heal from trauma if there is a trauma that has been working against you and you can't even understand why you keep going through certain circles working with your ancestors will help you come into terms with accepting it and healing from it that is one of the major benefits that i have gained and other people i know have also gained they'll show you mistakes that they have made and they don't want the same pattern repeating itself in your life i mean you, you that's two for the price of one man you can't you can't beat that listen i'm screaming now go work with your ancestors and then they come through in blessing you make sure you take good care of them make sure you're consistent and let me tell you baby they're gonna come through for you i'm not even joking ancestors always come through for you but then also learn to be patient because it's not all the time we ask for a bad goodie they're going to come through with a bag of sweets or something sometimes i want you to go for the test and learn from it and heal from it and show that you're ready for the blessing because when they come with the blessing they come real good Ooh, you don't want me going into details come on hey hey god <laughs> like oh god i choked myself now <coughs> don't kill yourself up hmm. <clears throat> okay i'm okay now when ancestors come through for you they like really come through it could be anything from having a job money friendship relationship opportunities anything really they would come through for you look at how that changed my voice now i was literally almost joking on my own saliva because i'm excited about ancestors <laughs> god have mercy on my soul okay moving on <clears throat> they help us um in coming out of past life karma i personally believe in reincarnation not everyone has to believe in it but if you do this is another aspect where working with ancestors is very very beneficial because they would help you overcome past life karmic death teach you things you need to do show you they help you they guide you and now because i'm a channeler i'm a medium and i work with ancestors a lot <clears throat> during my tarot readings for my clients I call on my ancestors I call on my spirit team they come through and they help me because I can't do this just based off my own intuition I can but it's always better to like they help me receive better and then channel it out same way I call on my clients spirit guides and ancestors to come through to help us get the right information that needs to be said out not just based off 
guesswork or something like that because not to discredit some people but some tarot readers do that just based off of guesswork like listen don't guess work on somebody's life <laughs> to somebody's life okay know what you're doing now <clears throat> like i said before working with spirit guides help you find your wishes if you ask them to help you they will collaborate with your wish and they'll show up or they'll just find a way to tell you in a subtle way um they help you find the right teachers spiritual teachers especially and even to work with certain type of um how do i put it spiritual priest like an Iyanifa or a Babalawo in Sheshe. When I first started working with these spiritual professionals in the Sheshe tradition, I once had a not so good experience with one of them in particular. It didn't dupe me or anything. For every time I paid, it did my job. But That story, he get a CB. The nigger wanted to marry me and I said no. I'm not interested. And that kind of caused a bit of imbalance, to put it nicely. You know, and I just like, I just like, no, I can't deal with it. The moment I have an issue trusting someone I'm working with, I'm going to that. So... I pulled away and without a fight, I just pulled away because I mean, fighting and getting cat fight dirty is not my style. It's never been, it's not going to be. I don't take a gun to a gunfight, okay? <laughs> like, there are a million ways to skin a cat without getting your beautiful nails dirty. Anyway, I didn't get into any unnecessary fight or stuff, I just left it alone. And then I knew I needed to work with other people. Um, I still had my Yanifa, by the way, who was aware of everything because I told her. But she's very, very busy. So there are aspects where I needed her to come through. She couldn't because she was just busy and I didn't know what it's against her. So I know, I, oh, sorry, I knew at that time I needed someone else to, to kind of step into the shoe that that other person has stepped out of in my life. And I waited and I prayed and I asked my spirit guides and my ancestors in particular for help to please bring me the right person who is trustworthy. And can I categorically say that I met this person? Mm -hmm. He's an amazing, amazing spiritualist I work closely with. I even refer people to him. There are certain work that I cannot do because of um, it requires blood sacrifice. I can't do blood sacrifice because, first of all, I'm not even ready for all of that <laughs> mental trauma of watching an animal die, okay? The law of the land does not permit me. Thirdly, I'm not an Yalorisha or Yanifa or Lorisha. I'm not initiated into the system yet, so I can't do all those kind of work. So my spiritual work is based on Kabbalah, who do root work, and astrological things like that. So it's still kind of different form of spirituality. Not to say that I'm not fully into Isheshe, but you can't rush the process. You have to go through it full-fledged at your own pace, and I'm doing just that. So even people that, but you can't do it. No, mm -mm -mm -mm. don't worry. I got someone who can do it for you, who is trustworthy, tried and tested. Now I would not have come in contact with this person if I had rushed into it without knowing what I was going into. But with the help of my spirit guides, because I always consult them. Like, listen, this person is it shady? Hmm? Tell me, tell me. The moment I get a whiff of any funny games, I'm out. I'm out. I can't deal. 
so those are areas where spirit guides help you other than finding your wishes they help you find the right trustworthy priest because listen there's so many scammers in the last one month yeah yeah lara fashola's account has been impersonated multiple times same as uh, Ifalewa, same as Oluwe Ifaleke, same as uh, Adun, Adun, Ad, uh, Adunla, Yadunla, same as Gem Goddess. I can go on and on. And there's another person, I can't remember his name now, he's also an Oluwo. About six people that I'm aware of, I called some of them's attention to it, the one I could. Like Gem Goddess, I sent her a message, listen, someone is sending me a message that she is you and i know it's not you and she responded that i've been trying to stop this person for a long time now so be very careful who you go to these are people that i know well most of them i know personally apart from gem goddess i don't have a personal relationship with her but at least i was able to send her a message and she responded but all the other ones i know them and i knew it wasn't them and it's like gosh Please, oh, me, I'm begging. Should you ever see a Mizoni drop that is not a Mizoni drop? Call me and tell me. I don't send personal messages to people to come and do work with me. I don't do it. It's just wrong. So if you see that kind of behavior, it is not me. Call me and tell me. You sent me a message, screen grab, evidence. I want to see it. What time? Because I don't do shit like that. If you send me a message, I would respond to you. But I don't go sending people message first. I don't do it. I don't go into people's DMs. Listen, my life is very busy. I don't have time. Okay? So I'm just putting that out there so you don't say, I didn't know. You know, baby. I've told you now. Okay? Impersonating people is the order of the day. So please be mindful. This is why I am very careful even making referral to people I have not worked with personally and I cannot vouch for. Anyone I'm sending you to, I know them one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, moving on. I've talked about um, <clears throat> how the Orishas can help you heal from trauma, ancestral traumas, things that they did in their time that might be trickling down to your generation and affecting you they'll show you and then you work on it things from your parents life also patterns repeating themselves they will help you figure out okay baby don't do it this way do it that way because your mama tried it that way and she got in trouble mm -mm, don't try that and they will also let you know things that you are doing personally that is just not working and as long as you follow their advice it's a give it's it's a it's a it's an assurance it's a given your life will be better for it and i've noticed in most of my readings for my clients that ancestors always come through with a message and they always want them to build a relationship with them and this is why i'm taking time to make this video because a lot of them want to get close to us to help us and also to help them so i'm just gonna round it off with this last point of to build an ancestor altar, I already mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but just to be clear, get a glass of water, write out the names of your grand your grandparents, start with your grandparent first. Because people are like, oh, oh, how do I start? Yeah, this is how you start. Get a glass of water, light a tea light candle or a stick candle, write the name of your maternal grandmother and your maternal grandfather. Do the same, your paternal grandmother and grandfather. Write out their names and put it on the altar. Now, some people say, I don't have space in my house. To... You don't need a big space for an altar. Where I'm sitting like this is enough, is altar enough. <laughs> this kind of tiny box behind me is altar enough. It might not even take that much space. If you have their, your, their pictures, your grandparents' pictures, put it there and just look at them love on them pray for them um if you know their burial their resting place you can drop flowers for them because i think what people don't understand is that the practice of dropping flowers and remembrance is also a way of connecting with our ancestors and contrary to the jargons that christianity has said to us that oh no it is demonic to work with your ancestors you carry ancestral curse 
Oh, well, that's the reason why they want to work with you. So you can undo the un ancestral curse if there is any. And what we call ancestral curse sometimes is just a trauma of things that has happened that needs to be undone and you move on. The thing is, the moment you actually work on it, your life becomes better for it. So it's a win-win, baby. I'm just saying. It's a win-win. So why would you want, you want to work with them? Now, once you've put this picture, name, water, a small candle, have a specific day, Mondays preferably, that you meet with them. Be consistent. Every Monday, change the water. Don't let the water get murky or uh, um, discolored before you change it. Or if it does, just change it, wash out the cup, replace a new fresh glass of water. If it's clean enough, you can take a sip from it. It's just a way of saying, I commune with you. Ancestors don't like noise. So the moment you present that space for them, don't do anything disgusting. Don't touch it with your disgustingness. I'm not going to... I'll leave that to you. Whatever that means to you. Just make sure you keep it clean. Keep the space clean. Keep yourself clean when you're approaching them. Don't disrespect their space. Don't take the, don't take the mickey out of it. Um... You can just spend some time, if you have time, meditate, sing songs that you know that maybe your grandma liked in a lifetime or your granddad liked, or songs they used to sing to you, those kind of things help you bond. Um, and yeah, just be consistent. Now, people leave food on ancestor altar. I would leave that at your own discretion if you want to do that, if you don't want to do that. But the first time I left food on my ancestor altar, it was asked for, and it was my... I knew it was my maternal grandmother, sorry, my maternal grandfather who asked for it because it was on a salad day. He specifically asked me for a particular Yoruba food, which I had the opportunity to cook. Now, the good thing about them is that they'll never ask you for anything out of your reach. And people think, oh, when you're making food for ancestors, you have to make a big plate. Let me give you a picture. You make a small pounded jam for yourself. Take a small bite the size you put in a baby's mouth and a bit of soup and that is food enough food for ancestors they don't need the food it's just the experience it's like bonding with you it's an experience of bonding they don't need food it's just like mm, i used to eat this when i was alive they, it invites their energy into your space it makes them feel like you you love on them and you remember them so they don't need the food. Contrary to oh, our ancestors need food. They, they don't need food on the other side. It's just a way of bonding. Okay. Um, uh, what else am I missing? <laughs> yeah, like I said, they don't like noise. So if you want to work with ancestors, maybe at the time you want to work with them, just play very soft music that is not too loud, something soothing, something chilled. Although... If you want to play a particular song they liked in their life of, and time. So now, as a Nigerian, maybe they liked Wasua Inde or Obe, or they liked King Sonia Day, or they liked Takmala. You can play those kind of songs for them. But it shouldn't be too loud and it should be bam, bam, bing, bing, bam, bam, bing, bing. Just play the song that you can hear it. If you can hear it, I mean, volume number five or seven is loud enough in some TV. Now, if you have a TV that is attached to speaker, that's even louder. So make sure that it's something that is calm and subtle and they can hear it. It's just an experience of it. They don't need the music. They don't need the food. It's just a way of bonding before you go and say it is a demonic practice because everything is demonic. At the time, you guys shout demon too much, especially Africans. Okay, at the time, the things you're saying is demonic has no business or correlation with demon. But anywho, this is where I round up today. I'll see you another time. Stay blessed and keep conquering the world. Don't forget to like on my channel, follow me if you already haven't. Share the video with your loved ones, okay? And come back. I'm going to see you another day. Peace and blessings.